this. And then you just stick your root bottom in the ground. And you gotta give them a little bit of space to grow. And do the next one. So go down a little bit further and do the next one. We'll cover them over afterwards with Daddy. Oh, show the camera your worm. Worm. <laughs> Lucky you. You get to eat worms tonight. <laughs> okay, plant the next one a little bit further down. Today we're gonna plant some garlic. We do things a little bit differently here in the south. For instance, the fact that we get to plant our garlic much later into the season than some of our northern states get to. Here we are in the middle of December and we are just now getting around to planting our garlic. Needless to say, moving an entire homestead and farm was a lot of work. So now we get to do the fun stuff, like starting our very first garden at our new homestead. What better way to kick it off than a nice bed of garlic? So the first thing we do is measure out our row and if we had rope, we would be roping it off to, to guide us, but I just left the measuring tape out so that Ryan can follow it for making a trench. It doesn't have to be very deep. Garlic only has to be about three inches deep, so just need enough to get it in the ground and cover it over. Garlic comes in a few different types of garlic. So you have hard neck and soft neck. You also have elephant garlic, which isn't actually a true garlic. It's actually a leek, um, but some people do consider it a garlic and plant it at the same time. So in the south, it's better to grow the soft neck variety because it does better with the fluctuation of temperatures when it starts to get warm in the middle of the winter. Um, it does okay with that. Sometimes hard neck varieties have a little bit harder time with that and they can actually confuse them and you just don't end up with as good of a crop. I have grown hard neck and soft neck and had success with both. So here in the south, I feel like I can do either, but this year, the bulk of our garden is going to be soft neck. We have the early California from Mary's heirloom seed, and we have about six pounds of that actually. So we're gonna be planting a considerable amount of garlic. A lot of places will tell you to plant your garlic six inches apart and put your rows a foot apart from each other and all that. Um, and they'll say that two to three pounds covers about a hundred foot garden. We're doing things a little bit differently here. Um, we do a more intensive gardening operation where we plant things closer together. Not quite square foot gardening, but it's just a more intense planting um, because we use fertilizer from the animals for a good nutrient boost so our soil is really healthy. So for garlic, I keep in mind how big does a plant get? How wide does it get? How much space does it actually consume? So if my soil has enough fertility in it, the spacing can be much closer. So we probably plant ours like three to four inches apart and our rows as close together as that as well. Um, we probably will do six inches in between rows just to make it easy to mulch and pull weeds. So we have a 30 foot row that we're gonna start with. The weather might turn before we get another row done. So we're gonna start with that and go from there. We have these big, beautiful, healthy bulbs of garlic. This is exactly what you want to see when you order certified seed garlic. This is going to plant out to be beautiful. The bigger the cloves are, the bigger the head that it will develop. So I start out by separating the heads. You don't want to do this until the day you're planting or the day before because you don't want it to become not as fresh. It plants much better when they're freshly divided. So you're just gonna divide up each of the cloves and you're not gonna remove the outer paper from each clove, but if there's excess paper in between cloves, you can remove that. So you wanna leave the main layer of skin protection on each clove. You're gonna keep doing this until you have everything that you need that you're planting that day separated and you're gonna go through and you're gonna choose your biggest, most beautiful cloves. These are the ones that you want to 
locust you're planting on. You can plant the smaller ones as well and they will grow a plant, but you're gonna get a bigger plant off of this. So if you do accidentally remove some of the skin or even all of it off of a clove, don't worry, go ahead and plant it still and you shouldn't have too much of a problem, but just keep in mind, it's not required to take that skin off. So sometimes you'll see in gardening videos or blogs that you should soak or sprout your garlic first. Totally not necessary. That's a complete extra step that you do not need to do. You can just stick it into the ground just as it is. With five kids, a herd of goats, a flock of chickens, ducks, and quail, I try to make things as easy as possible here at Wholesome Roots. So if there's any shortcuts that can be taken, I will take them. And if there's extra stuff that people do that is supposed to make it better, I tend to just skip that and make it more simple and easy for myself. So once you have your trench dug, you can go ahead and press the root end down. The growing point is the tippity top. That's where the green leaf will grow out and the bottom of the bulb is where the roots will grow out. So if you have time and you can invest into your garden planting, go ahead and push that root centered right down into the soil. Now, if you are trying to be quick and you don't have time, toss it. If it lands like this, it's going to be fine. If it lands like this, it's going to be fine. It will eventually turn itself upside down, a right side up, and put its roots down. Those of you that watched last year's garlic planting video probably saw where we literally just threw handfuls out into the garden bed and sprinkled some mulch over the top of them and we still had an excellent crop of garlic. In fact, here's some of our crop from last year. This is the hard neck variety that we grew last year. We planted it very late so it didn't grow very big, but we still got a crop. This is what we're going to replant. So you can see the green growing out the top already and there are roots pushing out the bottom of a whole bunch of them. All right, so we've got a row of garlic in the ground. And what we're going to do now is move our tape over to the next row and we're going to take and dig our next row so that it covers the garlic we just put in. So we're going to come all the way down burying the garlic as we go and thus forth creating a new trench. Once you get all your garlic in the ground and planted, you're going to water it in well and mulch it and then forget about it for the rest of the winter. Luckily, we have this big open area right at the edge of our forest where we can collect pine straw and leaves that have been broken down and ready to be turned into a nice mulch layer for our garden. Just like that, we got a full load. And look, got some nice, rich, decomposed stuff in there too to help. Oh yeah, baby, nice stuff. 
So garlic likes to be tucked in for the winter. So we're gonna use as much mulch as we can gather up and apply to our garden bed. You can go three inches deep on your mulch and it's still gonna be happy to come up through in the spring or even before if you live in the south. But you want at least a layer completely covering the soil so that it holds the moisture in anytime it rains. That way you don't have to worry about watering in the winter. So once you have your garlic in the ground, covered with soil and covered with mulch, you're gonna water it in heavily. You can water it before you put the mulch or after, it doesn't matter. As long as you water it in good to close all those air pockets that have formed from disturbing the soil. And we have a very big rainstorm event happening today and tomorrow as well. So we don't have to water because of that. If it was going to be light sprinkles, I would go ahead and water, um, but it's going to be heavy rain. So we timed it just right, right before a big rain so that we could skip another step, making it easier. So this is the easy way to plant garlic in the south. Uh, if you like it, go ahead and uh, try it out, see how you do, and let us know down in the comments. And if you have any questions, reach out to me on my Facebook group, Wholesome Roots Farmstead Friends, or here in the comments as well. Thanks for watching.